When we get up in the morning Along with coffee, toast and cake If you like the old stone eroding You like to break and beg Now let's join Greg Reed and Griff Martin As we head out on the road So sit right back Buckle right in It's a wake and bake morning show It's a wake and bake morning show It's a wake and bake morning show Good morning Good morning everybody, time to rise and shine I'm Shelby Barrett, the Stonette for the Stoned Roadie Show And it's time to wake and bake with Craig Reed and Griff Martin the Stone Roadie Show, podcast number 154, action. All righty then, looky here, looky here, it's Friday morning, it's uh, April 12th, another wake and bake morning buzz on the Stone Roadie Show. My name's Craig Reed, a.k.a. The Stone Roadie, also known as the most famous roadie in rock and roll history ever. And this is my co-host, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. So what the heck are we going to talk about this morning there, Griff? Now what number is this uh, podcast, Craig? Do you know? 154? Is it 154? Okay, all righty then. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is wake and bake number thirty-seven, as far as I know. I don't know. I'm kind of out of it this morning. <laughs> it's not one of yeah. my good days. Yeah, we we act. You actually have a visitor in the house over there, Automotive. Hey, Auto, stick your head around the corner and say hi, man, to the uh, people in podcast land. Oh, there we go. What's up, everybody? Good to see you. That's Craig's hat that he has on yeah, there. Check it out. Uh, Craig's yeah, got so. an extensive hat collection out here. And uh, man, I suck at centering the thing for the camera. I'm blocking Craig's. Yeah. <laughs> so Otto's still alive and well. For those of you that uh, remember Otto Motive, he actually sold Craig a car that Craig blew up. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. I remember Ain't the first I, car I've ever blowed up. I was with Otto when you blew it up, and I said, Hey, Otto, man, Craig just blew your car up. <laughs> and he looked at me like, Oh, shit. I hope it wasn't the car, you know? But I said, No, I said, I think something Craig did. <laughs> yeah, just a radiator hose come loose, just a freak accident. It could you were watching somebody. movies on the way down to the uh, monument or something, right? You were like, uh, "Oh yeah, I'm always watching movies." Yeah, and you and you weren't looking at the uh, temperature gauge, and then by the time the uh, all all the uh, hell, the I can't see the temperature gauge anyways. My eyes are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> by the time it started pinging and knocking it was too late it never did do that it just uh downshifted and then it just uh quit running and then it pulled over and i looked out the back and it was smoke pouring out the back yeah it don't, you, take, uh, it don't take a minute for those things to overheat with an aluminum block and they're gone yes, you weren't are. you on the side of the road for like two hours or something oh my god yeah a long time and then you had to go to, uh, took, you took it to a dealer, right? And then they yeah, said, well. Yeah, AAA come and get me. They took me back to Jackson, Tennessee. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I had to stay there for. And well, you got a. No, uh, that was on the way down there. Yeah, and I, I took it there. Shit. Yeah, I had to go rent a car and then drive down to Mississippi and then come back and, and get the then, car. Then in your rental car, when you were down at the monument and the rental car, somebody plowed into the side of you in the parking lot or something well not plowed into it just scraped along the side of it did fifty five hundred dollars damage you know they can't just put bondo on a crease anymore they got to replace the whole damn panel they had to replace the whole back panel of that brand new uh toyota sonona or whatever it was yeah uh, then you got a ticket on the way back yeah, then the I got a ticket. Yeah. It. So, <laughs> so, yeah, that's just part of my luck. Yeah, <laughs> another day in the life of the stone roadie. 
<laughs> yeah, so we were going to talk a little bit about uh, being the most famous roadie, and uh, nobody's uh, challenging you to that. You know, you're well. Uh, no, that's that. I I kind of I got to got a little scuttled, but the the other day somebody asked if they was had watched this a, a roadie. Ask another roadie if. Uh, and, and in my interpretation, a roadie, <clears throat> just because you're on the road working, working shows, if you're a lighting guy or a sound guy, that, that's what we used to call you. We used to call you a lighting guy or a sound guy. And a band, a band a, somebody that worked for a band that was called a roadie. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, the lighting and the sound guys and the, and then they got pyro, and then they got video, and and then all those guys turned into tech. So then you had a lighting tech, and a sound tech, and a pyro tech, and a, all these techs, you know. And then the and then the, the band roadies, which is somebody that humps band gear, you know, they wanted to become techs, you know. And it's just funny these days. God, everywhere you go. You go to if you go to buy a, a eyeglasses, you see an eye tech. If you go yeah. to if you go to a dentist, you see a dental technician. You go get your computer fix, you get you see a computer tech. You know, you get your you get your plumbing fix, you you get a plumbing tech. Everybody wants everybody wants to be a tech. I think a, a janitor now is some kind of a a a. a, a sanitation technician or something. Yeah, and, and, a, and, a, and a, a, a prostitute is a love tech you know they've made they've made th three or four movies about band roadies and the, the name of the movie is roadie you know it's not tech you know but these these band roadies these days they they get insulted if you if you call them a tech a, a, a roadie you know and it's it just seems like I've always called myself a roadie and, and people go, people always tell me, oh my God, I wish I could have had your job. That would have been so cool, you know? And, and, and when you say somebody, you're a roadie, they automatically know what you mean. You're, you work for a band, you're a band roadie. If you say you're a tech, hell, you could be, you could be a, any kind of tech. I don't know why band roadies want to be called technicians, but uh, oh yeah, they get, they get seriously upset if you call them a, a roadie anymore. But uh, roadie sounds like rock and roll, and tech sounds like glasses and a pocket protector. I just don't understand it. Yeah, but yeah, they that. But yeah, I, but I, I, but I call myself the most famous roadie, and I, and I, the world's most famous roadie, and I do that as a joke. I mean, I was on Facebook, and people were going wanted me to write a book. I said, man, I'm not qualified to write no book, you know? And they said, and then they kept saying, you deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I'm going, that's for musicians. And he goes, well, you were partly, you were like part of the band, you know, you're just as famous as they are. I goes, yeah, I'm the most famous roadie in the whole world that ever existed in the dawn of time since the, <laughs> in the face of the earth. And they go, well, you are, you know? So, I just kind of rolled with it, made a joke out of it, and called, called myself the world's most famous roadie. And I kind of thought some some uh, roadies or some technicians would kind of uh, come up and go, "Oh, wait a minute! No, I'm I'm more famous than you." But in the last two years, n nobody has. And I don't know if it's the fact that I call myself a roadie and they don't want to be d distinguished as a roadie or or what's going on, but the other day somebody asked somebody if uh, they'd watched the, the Stone Roadie show, and they go, yeah, that guy that calls himself the most famous roadie that ever existed in history, you know, that's a bunch of bullshit, you know, and, and, and they say, well, well, who is? Well, they didn't know, and, and you know, they, they wanted me to go up into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, fame and pitch the idea to have them start um, having uh, roadies, you know, uh, acknowledged at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, that's not going to happen until uh, there's a need for it. And until there's a need for it, 
it's not going to happen. So I thought I would uh, kind of uh, invent a need for it, but it's been two years and nobody has uh, has kind of want to, had wanted to claim that title. And I've even I've even thrown up some names that you know would well, I think would qualify. And other people have said too. I think. You know, Red Dog from the Allman Brothers. He was like the, the, one of the very first roadies. You know, and he worked for the Allman Brothers, and and and, uh, and he was a band roadie. And and uh, you know, that's what they that's what they called people back then. They they were roadies, and you know, and uh, you know, and then there's and I've even mentioned people like Pops. You know, Dave Clemens. We had him on the show, and. Uh, you know, he was uh, he was uh, nominated the uh, the uh, what was it uh, Roadie of the Year uh, a couple of years a few years ago, and and every year they have a Roadie of the Year, and you know I, I you know I I thought maybe you know somebody would come up and go man you know this guy is more famous than you or whatever, but uh, you know God like. Even uh, even like Boxcar that that that, that wrote now works for for Leonard Skinner. He's he's uh, was Billy Powell's piano tech. He's probably the longest roadie uh, because he started in uh, 1980, not, 87, 87, 80, 89. Uh, well, no, he started when Mike Estes started, like 90 three or something like that because he was a good friend of Mike Estes and and um, he's been there ever since and and Boxcar actually the reason why he could maybe be considered because he actually gets up on stage when Tuesdays when they play Tuesdays Gone or anything with a harmonic in it you know Boxcar is actually becomes a part of the band and gets up and and uh, you know plays harmonic on Tuesdays Gone so you know that's pretty cool, but <clears throat> you know wh whether anybody can uh, outdo uh, my qualifications to become the world's most famous roadie. Because you know when I when I name myself that, I, you know I'm I am pretty qualified. You know I I had I'd ha I did have songs written about me, and uh, you know I've I've been in, involved in a, a, a quite a few antics that are pretty well known on the in the in the music industry you know and people know about them and i have quite had quite a few people tell me that i am that i am the world's most famous roadie so well you know i kind of wish that uh, you know some people would come forth instead of you know instead of just laughing at the fact that that i call myself that you know if you you feel you're more famous than i am you know that's that's me that may meet out at the street at, at, at high noon, you know, let's get down, you know, <laughs> and have a smoke have a off. showdown, have a you smoke know, whatever, you know, but uh, you know, it's a joke, you know, I mean, uh, you know, God, you take it serious, you know, but if you can beat me, go ahead, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to be hard, easy to beat with, you know, you know, I'm, I'm pretty qualified to, <laughs> to be that, to hold that title but if you think you can do it go ahead just go you know i don't care but it don't matter to me i don't really think i deserve that title but it, you know like i say it's just a joke but uh but whatever on that but um well how yeah, did you all i got how, to say about that but how did you end up getting named the stoned roadie but who did that who named oh I, I think i did that myself i started doing a radio show up at um uh, um karma radio up in kent and uh and uh i just you know it was you know just the fact that it it, it all just seemed to seem to correlate you know that i was always stoned and, and you know and ron eckerman you know he put in his book that uh you know i was uh, i was always stoned you know so it kind of like Compared you to Willie Nelson. Yeah, it just like kind of all fit together, and yeah, he, he compared me to, to Willie Nelson, you know. Your and name's I'm, mentioned it with Willie Nelson. You're so <laughs> dude, that's for sure. I'm in quite a few books and stuff, you know. So, so yeah, and uh, you know, Ron, Ron, you know, he said, uh, you know, most, 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 uh, 
guys that work for a band they they have they work for one particular musician you know they're they're either like a guitar roadie or a drum roadie or a keyboard roadie or or a, a, a backline roadie and he said but you know craig seemed to like uh uh wander around and just see see to everybody's needs you know and and i've heard other um roadies that have been in the business a long long time that say you know they don't mind being called a roadie because in their mind a roadie can walk into a gig and just make it happen you know if you if if, if you you know you 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 if you're just a, a guitar roadie and you walk into a gig and you got all this other equipment there and, and you're, the only thing you know how to do is guitar you're kind of screwed and so is the band you know <laughs> but uh yeah, you know, but at the time I could go in and I could set up all the equipment, you know, so I, you know, yeah, I'm a roadie, you know, and, I, and I'm proud of it, you know. Um, well, always, Jackson, well, Jackson Brown didn't say, let the techs take the stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they've always been called roadies. Now, why now all oh, roadies get insulted, you know, you call them a roadie. I've, I've heard people call somebody a roadie and that. That guy will go, go around the, that whole day singing a song. I'm just a roadie. I'm just, a roadie. <laughs> just you know, it's stupid, you know. But you know, I mean, God, there's everybody's a tech. Why would you want to be like everybody else? You know, I guess that's, I guess maybe they're they're the they're, they're the socialist roadies. They they they, <laughs> they want to be like everybody else. So you know, they want. to just be called a tech and just be like everybody else. Be be a socialist. I'm not a socialist, though. No, I'm yeah, you're socialist. definitely not a socialist. That's for sure. <laughs> and I'm not fat either. <laughs> yeah. Well, moving right along then, you know, we weren't on uh, here last Wednesday. And somebody said, well, that's Craig's been over to his neighbor's house again. And, <laughs> and I said, no, no, that was my fault. This time I, I called, I called in sick. I said, Hey, Craig, I got diarrhea. I can't do it because I had something else to do, but Craig didn't argue with me either. <laughs> he was like, yeah. oh, oh, goody, <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of wanted to talk about, uh, get into that thing about our. Yeah, I got, I got. You can see up here, I got like and subscribe. You know, like, you, you know, if you haven't done it yet, you know, try to do it on whatever d device you're on. Please, you know, try to like and subscribe because when we started doing this, you know, everybody said, "Oh God, you guys are going to be millionaires. Oh, what are you going to do with the money?" and and right away, we just said, man, you know, if we make a bunch of money at this, we'll just support the forgotten survivors, you know. And then right away, people wanted to start donating money. And I didn't want to go there. You know, I didn't want to make this a donation thing, you know. And I, I refused people. And it got so prevalent, people wanted to do it so much that I went, you know, it's... I can't do that. People are wanting to give thousands of dollars to these people that need the money and I'm refusing it. That's not right. So we started, you know, taking donations and then, and then right away we got pushed into doing that rocking for a reason thing. And then from then on, it's kind of like been just gone way too much on the donation side. Now I'm not trying to get away from, from getting donations from, for the forgotten survivors, because that's, that's real cool, but we, you know, we don't want to start out every show and, you know, and, 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 and people can't afford it no more, man. Bidenomics, you know, you, people can't afford to do donations and oh, nobody yeah. has to be bugged about, you know, every time they turn around, somebody's wanting money. And that's why I don't, I don't want to get involved with that donation stuff. But, you know, if you, if you're, you know, if you're fortunate enough in your life that you can, you know, you feel bad for the people that, you know, were on that airplane that had nothing to do with getting banged up and beat up for the rest of their life. And, you know, if you'd like to help them out, you know, we're, we're more than happy to, you know, take, you know, take, uh, take donations for it and divot it out. You know, we don't want to say we're not going to do that, but, you know, we've, we really like to just go and, and get it off the subscriptions because right now we've only got 
just over 2,000 subscriptions, and we're we're making I don't know couple, just over a couple hundred bucks a month on subscriptions, but that's not enough to support these guys. You know, if we can, if we can get it up five times that, and then and now then we can start getting like a thousand dollars a month. You know, if we can get like ten thousand, if we can get fifty thousand, then we can. You know, then we can get, uh, we can, you know, start bringing in some pretty significant, you know, money to to give the survivors without without having to do, uh, rely on donations at all. So that's really where we'd like to go with this. So we can just totally get away from the donation thing. Maybe not totally, but you know, um, you know, uh, pretty much not have to rely on it as much as we did, but. But uh, since since we are on the donation, you know we have been um, taking things and selling them. People have been donating, not donating money, but donating items to sell on here. And uh, <clears throat> who's your friend that donated the? Uh, oh, Ricky Wascom. Yeah, he's a board member at the monument. He bought these pictures back here behind me, and. Uh, but who and, donated those? That's what I'm saying. Oh, well, that was uh, Brandon uh, Campbell and uh, Kent Griffith. Uh, okay, and that, that money is going to go to... Uh, uh, well, the the, uh, the actual posters back there, that goes to Mark Howard. And uh, that that was like, I think, 400 bucks, And then uh, another 100 for that shirt that um, My Grass is Blue is uh, going to... Uh, uh, Gene Odom. So, so yeah. yeah. So, so Ricky Mascom, uh, w w Wascom, he sent in five hundred and fifty dollars toward. Uh, yeah, toward we appreciate those that, items, Ricky. and 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 that's going to go to uh, Mark Howard and uh, Gene and, Odom. And, and yeah. what's cool about those those items? They're not. They're going to be um, displayed in some way uh, by the board somehow in the future. <laughs> So it's kind of like, you know, going to be uh, put somewhere for safekeeping and then uh, they're going to figure out what they're going to do with them. So it's not like they're going in somebody's closet, you know, and, and they're going to just get stuck away somewhere. It's, it's going to be there for uh, Skinner fans to enjoy. And then Angela Leonard, our good friend Angela Leonard, she sent in another $200 to, to, to give to Leslie because she, she thought – Leslie's not being mentioned enough. So as you, as you can see, she sent in 160 one other time and 500 one other time. So she just sent in a, another 200 here to to donate to Leslie. So thank you, thank you, Angela, for that. And uh, yeah, that's about all I got for the donation thing there. <laughs> so, you know, so uh, so yeah, yeah we get. Uh, so go ahead. Yeah, and then, and then we like to, you know, do uh, have uh, listener participation too, like our little uh, drawing prize giveaway that we're doing. Yeah, so uh, hey, that's cool, right? <laughs> yeah, and then our by the, our disciple Dave, he 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 sent me another sign. It's like a display, you know, when I'm when I'm having problems <laughs> with my rented lips, they're not working good. I can always show this, and, I, and then I won't have to explain, you know. And and then the, I can flip it over as a uh, one toke over the line. <laughs> <laughs> I love that thing. That's cool. Yeah, he's always coming up with some cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're a little bit behind on uh, going over the comments and things. Uh, as far as we missed the, uh, you know, we, we did the, um, the, on the, on the, on the road with Griff Martin, that was a, uh, the best of, so whenever Craig and I, if we can't do the podcast and we're, we're going to call it the best of, and we'll just put up something, uh, out of our archive of material that we can share, you know, and, uh, and so we, yeah, I uh, thought about calling this one off a little bit ago. <laughs> That's not like, God, I can't do it. We just called one off the other day, but me and Kathy Godsey's doing one tomorrow. So I thought, well, oh, that would no. make up yeah. for it. But, you know, but, uh, you know, I'll try to pull this one through. I, I haven't really had PMS here in the morning before. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got a lot of, a lot of comments. Um, 
uh, that we can uh, go over from from the one that we missed Wednesday, and then the one that we uh, that, uh, that the, the, all the other comments from the other ones that we did that we haven't gone over yet. So, so we'll uh, just got a lot of cool questions. A lot of uh, people were really enjoying the uh, Mike O'Hara um, audio about the uh, the people, the first responders to the plane crash. Which, uh, speaking of that, Craig, you know, you're talking about the most famous roadie. One of the reasons for that is, is, you know, there's not too many people been through the shit you've been through as a roadie, you know, I mean, traveled the world with one of the most famous bands that, that there ever was. And then you were in a plane crash. So I don't think there's too many people going to step up to the plate and try to, you know, take that, that. Yeah. Uh, like I said before, you. when I, when I started with Leonard Skinner, they weren't nobody, you know, I mean, they didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of really man when i started with them like i said before we had to use my credit card to get from gig to gig and then after they got paid they'd pay me back you know but uh and yeah, uh, yeah, so. make anything i mean i made uh I made the same amount of money that the band made before that. I started. They all made the band and the roadies and everybody made three dollars a day per diem. And when I started, they bumped it up to five dollars a day. You know, so uh, and you had to be on the road to get that. When you when we were down there at the Hell House spending the night, at the Hell House or something that was all for free. You know, so yeah. So I you started you at the bottom, dues, man. So. I started out in in a you know traveling around in a van and. A, Driving the big blue, that little 14 foot truck, you know, we started riding in the back of it. Heck, Kevin Elson and Joe Barnes drove it, and, I, and they wanted me to sit in the middle. I said, Man, I'll just make a bed in the back of that thing. <laughs> I'd climb in the back of the truck and go to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, you definitely, you know, you were with the band, you know, you were right there with them right in the beginning and uh, doing all those cool things. And so uh, that's that's why you got that title. So we'll start going over these comments and things here. Uh, we got one uh, one lady that she kind of comments a lot on our uh, on our podcast, Kimmy. Kimmy, we see your comments. Some of them are funny as hell. She liked the, uh, the last shirt you had on. It says, Craig, your blue dress shirt looks fantastic. So you're, uh, you, you have a, I don't uh, remember which one that was. <laughs> uh, last, the last one that we were on. Uh, oh, so go back and look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and then a guy named Jeff, I don't think that was you, Jeff. It says, uh, <coughs> Mike O'Hara. He thinks that Mike O'Hare, the guy that did all the interviews, and he said that it it was uh, it was for a thesis, and he thinks that uh, that was bullshit. He thinks that uh, that guy just made that up, and he he just wanted to call up and and interview all these people, and that he was using that thesis thing uh, for a reason to be able to call him because I don't think anybody's ever seen it, and you know and. Kent uh Griffith, you know, he's the one who uh who uh brought those out and dusted them off and cuz I'd never heard them before and so so I kind of like maybe have to, I might want to check uh, check out that uh that could be possible that uh that you know it was a thesis, maybe not. Um so uh yeah, Jeff, uh you know, it is kind of suspicious, but Mike O'Hare, if you're listening, man, come on the uh on the podcast and talk about it yeah we like to we like to get you on and and uh talk about your interviews with other, all really good interviews and speaking of that we're not going to have any more of those on the end of the uh the end of the podcast i think kent told me there's several more but um but the the ones that that i have left the volume on the phone is so bad i couldn't even hear it so i don't want to put something on there that's not uh, audible enough for you guys to hear and I can't hear it. So I don't want to share something like that. Yeah. That's the guy that uh, is going to come out and take care of your pond. Right, Craig. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Parsons. Parsons land clearing and services. Yeah. Tom. When are they going to do that for you? Oh, it's, it's been raining here. My God, that thing's full of water. Now we're going oh, to yeah? wait till it dries out. Yeah. 
Yeah, we had a nice little storm here today, which was kind of nice. Yeah, we had yeah. that we had that eclipse here a couple of days ago. That was pretty cool, man. Yeah, they yeah did. it was, was a it? total eclipse. Yeah, it got dark. It didn't get pitch black dark, but it got dark. Yeah, it was it was really cool. Was it clear? Were you able oh, to see it was it? yeah, it was clear skies. Yeah, I I I had a pair of those uh glasses that the eye doctor gave me when they dilate my eyes and then I had a pair of other uh, dark sunglasses and I just put those on and heck when when it was the, the moon totally covered it up I kind of looked at it for a few seconds just bare eyed it was it was pretty cool man yeah, it was So you didn't use the official eclipse glasses? No. Uh -uh. How long has it been since that eclipse? Uh, oh God, I don't know. I, I've never, I've, I've seen partial ones, but I've, you know, I guess yeah, that, you know, to I be able to takes, see one on it, a clear, clear day is really, uh, is really a, a pretty cool event. Yeah. When I, I didn't think much about it, but when it was coming, I was going, oh yeah, whatever, you know, but when I was standing there in the yard, you know, what looking at it, I'm going, you know, this is pretty cool. <laughs> well, they say it takes two weeks for you to go blind. So. <laughs> we turned on pink floyd eclipse uh, we played pink floyd while that was happening and uh at the shop so the guys thought that was pretty cool <laughs> and then we had somebody says the reason you're not getting subscribers <clears throat> excuse me the reason you're not getting subscribers because <laughs> what uh craig is guessing about uh the questions and griff is the smart one and he knows as much as craig which is very little <laughs> <laughs> so see we're we'll put we'll put the comments on there if you guys want to you know say something like that we don't care you know it might be true <laughs> so so neither neither one of us know what the hell we're talking about basically I guess yeah that's basically I'm... yeah that's cool <laughs> and um <laughs> Then somebody says, uh, Craig had some extra strong weed today. I said, <laughs> I got high just listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> and then this person says, uh, appreciate what you're doing for the survivors. No two shows are alike. Many fans, uh, now, uh, that, that, uh, that we have now that you weren't even alive, you know, back when Skinner was uh the original skinner that we have fans that weren't even alive then so that's true because you know yeah it's been almost 50 years yeah <clears throat> yeah so you have a lot of uh years, yeah. brand new skinnered fans and uh yeah i i heard uh, is that that's uh leon isn't it that's leon yeah he was he he wanted to be seen he wouldn't leave me alone yeah he was doing a lot of wine and sound like a monkey <laughs> Somebody had never seen the podcast before. They said, what the hell is that noise? <laughs> he was doing a bunch of whimpering. He he wanted Otto to pick him up, but Otto probably wouldn't do it. No, he was, uh, he's over here standing on my leg, wanting me to pick him up. You should see how long uh, Leon can stand up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, like a little. Front of Craig just begging. He looks like he can walk. He's like a little furry. He little always man. wants me to hold him. He's a furry little man. As soon as I pick him up, Wicker's down there want me to pick him up, too. Then somebody asked, uh, can you ask Gene Odom why Ronnie and Nadine divorced? Um, you wouldn't have to know anything about that, would you, Craig? No, uh -uh. that happened yeah. way before I was came around yeah. well I mean, what i think gene's already in bed or i'd call i him don't even know him. why i got divorced five times <laughs> well you don't know why you got married yeah <laughs> i can i can i can get i can get some pretty good guesses of why i got divorced five times but <laughs> yeah and uh i i think that what was your second wife you were on the bus and you saw a pretty girl walk by and you went, Hey, that's my next wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the one you still talk to too, isn't it? And occasionally. Yeah. Occasionally. Yeah. Talk to the second one. In the Do you talk to any, uh, any of them other than her? No, uh -uh. no, <laughs> just those two. That'd be cool to get one just on the podcast and ask what it's like to be married to the stoned roadie. That would be a, a cool <laughs> podcast to have, uh, 
one of Craig's ex-wives on there. But uh, yeah. <laughs> one just and then, a couple miles from here, but she's not coming on the Stone Roadie show. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> the other one lives in Florida. <laughs> Yeah, and then this guy named Brian here says it must have been really bad being uh, crumpled up in a plane waiting for help with all of your friends needing help. And um, what was that like, you know, but you were I was out. I was yeah. unconscious. So, yeah, I yeah, I don't have any of those. You know, I that's what I say. I can't I can't speak for how <laughs> anybody else reacts to what what happened because i was knocked unconscious i didn't see anything i didn't i didn't hear anybody screaming i didn't see anything it would have been pretty bad you know you had steve Which, uh, Lawler, steve yeah. Lawler saw the whole thing but it was you know like he said it was getting pretty dark you know so yeah steve has a good recollection of all that stuff and if you guys missed that that was just like uh three podcasts ago we had steve Lawler on and and uh um, I actually sent him that, that sign. So he ought to be getting it. That sorry, we're stoned sign that I had. So, uh, yeah, so he, so he's yeah, the, the one, that. the one that I hold up so we, yeah. so we don't lose our monetization. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't been losing it, either, but we haven't been talking politics either. So, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which, uh, I think, uh, I think everybody already knows. There's a lot there to be talked about though. Yeah. Oh boy. And you can find Amen. lots of, uh, people talking about it. You don't need to hear us talking about it. So, uh, and then uh, OJ, OJ died. yesterday. Oh yeah, that's right. I found, I found that out today. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, he died of cancer. I guess. Somebody, I Seven saw a thing. Ago. It said it showed Charles Manson and, uh, he, he was saying, come on up OJ. It's not. It's not that bad of it. It's a dry heat. <laughs> Come on down, I guess. Come on down. Yeah, it's a, Come it's on a down. dry it's heat. A dry heat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then we got uh, to say, uh, Craig, uh, have you ever seen Artemis Pyle's band? No, uh -uh. I wanted to. He was going to play here real close. And I told Artemis I was going to come see him. He says, yeah, come see him. <laughs> He's and, actually got, then got COVID, a COVID kicked in. So yeah, that, I was that, looking that, at his uh, schedule and he's going to be in Ohio coming up here. I don't know where in Ohio, <laughs> but um, if it's close enough to, you ought to pop in on him, man. That would be great. Um, and then uh, this person says, Craig, the fat shaming is hurting your subscriptions. But, yeah, probably. But, <laughs> but then he goes, but I'm down in weight now from 240 to 211. <laughs> so, so it might be causing problems with the subscriptions, but but it's working as far as, you know. <laughs> it's saving lives. Well, I'm out yeah. to save the world, you know. That's my that's my goal. <laughs> I was uh I was in that last video, the on the road when I, I went up uh in the last video that we that uh we put up on the last podcast. <clears throat> I, uh, I, I was looking at myself in the video and then, cause I don't, you don't normally see me on the road and you can see my reflection in the uh, granite and you know, the camera will put 10 pounds on you right there. And, and back then I think I weighed, uh, 190 or something and Craig was calling me a big fat ass. And so <laughs> since then I've dropped down 20 pounds. So it, it's kind of, I can't be on a fat shaming podcast and be a fat ass. So, <laughs> so I had to get, I, I had to get down, but the bad thing about it is, is that everybody thought that, uh, I was Dwayne easily. So Dwayne, man, you know, they must think that, you know, you and I are, are big, are big fat guys. So, but Dwayne's not, a, Dwayne's not a fat guy. He's, but they said that he and I looked alike. Um, then here's a question. Uh, the, the Pepsi tribute video has Skinner performing. Uh, you got that right. And during the song, a roadie came out and switched guitars with Alan. Was that you? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, yeah. That was the fastest. I haven't seen that. That's the world's fastest guitar change. Yeah, and I, I was, I wasn't even the guitar tech then, and uh, I just happened to see Alan 
break a string and Chuck was doing something and Alan was looking all around for Chuck and Chuck was Chuck was over doing something else and I I said oh crap so I grabbed I grabbed Alan's other guitar and, and Alan seen that Chuck wasn't going to come out with his guitar so he was just unplugging it and 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 taking it off his shoulder as I come flying around the 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 amp line with the other guitar and it was perfect timing oh yeah Did yeah he even Alan miss a said note? Uh, huh? Did he even miss a note? It, it, just a little bit. He goes, he he was blown away. He goes, Greg, that was the fastest guitar change I ever <laughs> seen. He said, as soon as I unplugged it and turned around, you were right there with the guitar. He said, that was great. Yeah, it was I'll funny. I have to dig that up. See if we can't put that on the. Podcast I've got I got a right. shot of that actually. There, oh, I've, do you? Yeah, I've got a still shot of that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I've never seen that. That's great. That's great skin formation. Thanks for that question, because uh, I never knew that. Uh, that's that that's on my resume for the world's most famous roadie, the fastest yeah. guitar change ever. <laughs> yeah, Griff, Griff, hard to believe. So you. said Alan Collins. <laughs> hard to believe you've known uh, Craig this long, and and we're still learning stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a lot. Well, like that one person said, you know, I mean, I don't know crap. You know, I know as much as Craig and Craig, Craig knows, Craig, he knows he just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, then, uh, yeah, somebody says about, uh, Brenda Martin and she's the one that I was interviewing and in in the, on the road on the last podcast. And they said, she's the one who shot Artemis was Brenda. <laughs> oh yeah. Brenda, you know, a little, little, uh, backstory on her. She never, of course, she's the one, you know, her and her husband, uh, Johnny Motes was the one that they came to the house, uh, that, you know, uh, uh, Artemis and Mark Frank and Kenny Peden. That's, that's her house they came to. And she did not want me to interview her. She says, you would better not put this on the TV. And if you do, I'm going to have your ass. Well, you know, by the time I, I got done, I sweet talked her enough, you know, and I sent her, a, a a copy of it and, and got her to approve it. So if you guys see her saying, don't put this on TV, I did get permission from her to do that. So that's the only reason I did. I would not do that if somebody didn't want me to do that. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Brenda's, uh, she's, a a, a pretty, uh, cool chick. And, you know, she was she's she's uh very outspoken and she uh that's what she said you know that part about artemis getting shot that was a lie is what she said so that that monument down there it gets quite a few uh visitors every day oh, you know yeah. it's right there on 55 and there's a lot of people that pull in there every day and Brenda, she she lives there close, and she you know she goes she goes over there every day and makes sure that the place is tidy and cleans yep. up and stuff. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, all those people do. It's real cool. That, that place is really clean. You know, it's yeah, really, they it's really they real, well manicured and stuff. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it's like a well manicured golf course. <laughs> they yeah. get and like, there's always a book out there to sign. I'm just amazed at how many of those books that have been filled up. You know, they uh, get thousands and thousands upon thousands of Google hits every day, uh, about the monument, people coming from all over the world, stopping into the monument. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's really, if nobody's ever been there, it's, it's definitely somewhere that you want to go. And there's always somebody there that, you know, like Dwayne, he, he lives right down the road and he's usually there and, uh, and so, you know, he's really cool to talk to. Uh, Dwayne's a really nice guy, man. He's got, you know, any question you, you want answered, he'll answer. Every uh, day somebody's making some kind of a new video about Leonard Skinner. I, I saw one today. Somebody did a an airplane crash reenactment. And uh, somebody spends a lot of time doing these, you know. And it's, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, just, it's well, crazy I mean, that that people are, are just so involved, still so involved with this band. It's just, uh, it's amazing. You know, they're uh, 
I remember not too long ago, I was having a couple beers at a bar and there's a couple young bartenders back there. And then a Leonard Skinner song came on and I asked him, I said, I said, you like that song? Cause she was singing along with it. And I said, do you know who's singing that? And they go, no. And I said, it's Leonard Skinner. And they go, oh yeah, I don't know who that is. And, and then, and then a little while later, uh, sweet home Alabama came on and they were singing that. And then I go, I said, that's the same band. And they were, they knew the song. They just didn't know the name of the band. So, <laughs> they know the music. They might not know the name. And, and you know, she was probably like, you know, 23, 24 years old. So, uh, Oh yeah. That's uh yeah, they love the music. Uh, then somebody asked, how did the plane get out of the woods? Uh, well, what happened was they cut a road in there and then they used a crane to get that and put it on a flatbed, right, Craig? Well, didn't they bury a lot of it? Oh, uh, well, all the parts, the like the little tiny parts and pieces. I was were, thinking that. I was going, yeah. God, what a waste to bury all that stuff. Yeah. But the main the main uh, big parts and the main sections of it and everything, they, they took a crane in there and they, and they loaded it on a flatbed and they yeah. hauled it out of there, took it to the airport, I believe, and then the FAA went through it uh, with a fine-tooth comb and try to figure out you know what all happened like they always do and uh they do a forensics on the whole thing and and all the little parts and pieces that they couldn't get up you know they uh they just dug a big hole and just buried it in there so um but uh you know that's private property and uh the guy that owns it has cameras out there trail cameras and if anybody comes out there, then, uh, you will be on camera, which you'd never find it anyway. It's too, it's hard to get back there. You'd right, never I mean. find it. Yeah. If that helicopter wouldn't have been out there with that searchlight over top of us, they'd have never found us for until t the next day, at least. And then, uh, our friend Kimmy, uh, she says she's going to put a check in the mail to you, Craig. And she also, says that she appreciates and she knows how hard it is and it probably costs money out of our own pocket to uh do the podcasts and things and uh so she wants to contribute thanks kimmy you know if you can't you, you can't do it that's fine but if you can i mean don't don't anybody like craig said if you're you know if you're scratching to make ends meet don't be sending any money in you know but if you're a a rich person. I mean, we'd be great if, if, a, if a multimillionaire said, here, you know, take hundred grand. <laughs> well, I mean, wouldn't that be great, you know, and, and those guys would really appreciate it. So if there's any really wealthy folks out there, then, uh, then that would definitely and be, the, uh, and the shipping, you know, we, we, we send this stuff out. Those two paintings back there, those will cost about 50 bucks to send those. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, you know, we do. And then I, you know, I do a lot of traveling, but you know, it's my contribution to what, you know, uh, what I do. It's actually, I get it back. You know, it, that old saying, when you give to people, you get it back is definitely true. I mean, you know, I spend a lot of time and somehow I don't know how it happens, but I always, I get to do something cool, get to meet a lot of cool people. I know Otto and I have traveled a lot of places and done a lot of things, gone to a lot of gigs, met a lot of people and, and, you know, it's really yeah, worth it to me. So, yeah. and then we go, let me see here. Uh, Craig, how did you take the news of the people in the plane crash that died and, um, how did Ronnie dying affect you in your life? Oh, when I was in the hospital, as soon as I heard who all died, I, I had to leave. I had to get out of the hospital. They said, you can't leave. You, you have a, a tube in your chest. You can't leave. I said, well, as soon as you pull that tube out of my chest, I'm out of here. And uh, so they, they pulled the tube out of my chest. I said, okay, I'm, go I'm gone. They goes, no, you can't leave. We, we have to watch that for a couple of days, you know, for make sure no infection sets in. 
after a couple of days, I said, man, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out of here. And they said, all right, well, let me, let us give you an antibiotic shot, you know, before you leave, just to make sure everything's good. And they hit me up with a big old shot of morphine and knocked me out for a couple more days. And, and I woke up and I goes, okay, though, thanks for the trip, but um, I'm out of here. You ain't hit me up with no more needles. So, you know, so they, uh, that's when me, yeah, I, yeah, I, I didn't take that well, you know. As soon as they, yeah. as soon as they said Ronnie was dead, I just, it was just they hit me like a ton of bricks, and I just said, "Man, it's over," you know. And it's yeah, it's just my whole life just ended right there, basically. You know, they said it's you know as soon as Ronnie was gone, I just said, "Man, it's over," you know. And all those other guys were busted up so bad, I didn't ever think that it would ever. Never in my wildest imagination did I think it would, you know, s still be going, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, you know, we've yeah, all you know, Gary, Gary, Gary was all bested up. Alan almost lost his arm. Leon almost lost his, I mean, you take Alan and Gary and Leon and, you know, that's the band, man. You know, I mean, but, you, but you we've make, all. Make, we, we've Steve. all lost a friend, you know, and, you know, but how many people can you say lost that many friends at one time that, you know, that's, that's had to be rough on you. There, it was Greg. all uncalled I mean, for. Yeah. And, and then all these people are still hurt. You know, I mean, no, none of these people that are still hurt ask for this, you know, they were on there trying to, you know, yeah. trying to create, you know, a history and, you know, and they're still suffering. It's not fair, you know, but, you know, life's not fair, you know. Yeah, I, and they, they assumed when I they feel got like, the I feel like I, you know, I should do everything I, I can do to help, you know, because I'm, I came out pretty much unscathed, you know, um, except for, uh, except for my uh, brain damage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I came out of it pretty good, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, now, I mean, just think if, if that never happened, uh, I think everybody, I think you'd probably be quite a wealthy guy. I think they would have, Ronnie probably would have took care of you. You'd probably, well, be, like uh, I said before too, if I'd ever made any more money than I made, I'd have probably killed myself. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like they all did, you know? You know, it's probably the only reason I'm still alive. I didn't have enough money to kill myself. <laughs> so actually the plane crash and might've saved your life. Maybe it might, it might have. Yeah. Yeah. If I'd have, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if, if, if somehow, if it's possible, if Ronnie isn't, you know, kind of manipulating things going, you know what, Craig, I'm going to, I'm going to have to get you out there working for these survivors. Cause you know, we, we need to try to figure out how to take care of them. And sometimes I think about that, you know, fate. You know, I got 47 of. grand in that plane crash. That's what I came out of it with. And I think I spent it all on drugs and you know, it went quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and 47 grand isn't, that ain't isn't shit, dropping man. a bucket compared to, you know, that's like a, not, that's like a year's salary back then, which yeah, that ain't you know, that, yeah, forty-seven thousand. It's a lot of money in one lump sum, but it goes quick. Especially and it's, snorting and, cocaine. <laughs> and somebody asks, has Artemis ever shown his scar where the gunshot uh, hit him? <coughs> I kind of know that. Somebody told me that. I don't want to mention their name. They they probably wouldn't care. I know who they are that told me, and they said that Artie pulled his shirt off and showed him the bullet wound. He said he's got a scar, and it looks like a bullet wound in his shoulder. So, you know, you know who am I? I mean, if if it happened, I, I wasn't there. So, you know, I can't I can't say it didn't happen. Um, Brenda you know, in the last podcast said it didn't happen, but you know, I wasn't there. So, uh, I can't say that it didn't happen. So a lot of things people assume, but I'm not going to assume that, uh, that it didn't happen, but there is, there is actually, a, a scar on Artemis 
shoulder and several people have have told me they've seen it so don't know what if it's a bullet wound or not but he definitely is uh here he has a scar and let me see here uh oh craig must have been at his neighbor's house again and uh <laughs> is that why you did the best of no no uh, that was that was my fault that time yeah the, the best of that craig uh yeah Greg, uh, did, that wasn't his fault. That was my fault. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> Another person asked, I've seen lots of videos about it being said it uh, wasn't a lot of money on the plane. Uh, but then, of course, they said in the uh, audio, the Mike O'Hare, that there was $60,000 that was found. Um, so I think there was some money missing, according to that sheriff in the audio i don't know if you listened to it or not craig but there was uh there was some pilfering going on after there were some people stealing stuff off that plane well crash. yeah i know for a fact there were drugs on that plane and the, there were never no drugs found so something happened to those drugs and were never turned in <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah people said yeah we had i had drugs in my suitcase and and there weren't any drugs found and, <laughs> and the, and the uh, sheriff actually said that the only drugs they found was a small amount of marijuana and just some prescription. So some prescription pills. Then the, the last question here, and then we'll just do a wrap up, Craig. I thought Griff was Dwayne easily when he got out of the car. Talk about <laughs> a hat trick. <laughs> yeah i had that beard you know i had that beard back then and i think dwayne has got a beard and we kind of like look a lot alike and i think uh dwayne and i both had on the same shirt i think i had on a shirt kind of like the shirt craig's got on right now i got one like that and and uh yeah so dwayne and i which is a compliment because i have to say dwayne's a nice looking guy and uh really <laughs> i really like dwayne easily he's a He's a cool guy and he's the guy that donated all that property out there that monuments on and can't wait to go up there and, uh, and have a visit with him, uh, one of these days coming up here. So that's the end of the questions, Craig. So we'll, I guess we'll, Hey, Otto, stick your head around here and say, bye, man. <laughs> Automotive. <Bye. laughs> I ain't seen automotive in person in quite a while. We miss you, brother. We yeah, we got to hook up here pretty soon, bro. Yeah, we need to do a road trip. So, yeah, uh, sounds good. All right, Craig, let's go ahead and close it, man, and I'll uh and I'll edit it and get it back to you when it, and um we'll put it out for you know, Otto, man, you got up early this morning to come over to Craig's house. It, <laughs> oh man, there's nothing like a good wake and bake, and you know I live pretty close, close to Craig, so uh, yeah, it seemed like a good day for. Me. I think he's on his way up to uh, got to go up to uh, Pennsylvania to a uh, auto auto, thing, auction, auto yeah. auction today. He okay. stopped by this morning. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So happy trails to you, and till we meet again, and. See you later, alligator at the wild crocodile. It's been another episode of the Stone Roadie Show and cut.